Well, as you can see, I'm still here. <laughs> Ten years. <clears throat> I uh, <clears throat> usually wait for the uh, Spirit to indicate to me what I should preach about when I get asked to preach. And um, it seems that every time of late, it um, is harder to get a topic as it ever has been before. And I had the impression that I should preach today about joy and happiness because I think that this is these are um, characteristics that we should have in our Christian life, joyfulness and happiness. And uh, I think that we should try and take this with us right to the kingdom. Now, <clears throat> I started to research the topic and I thought, what on earth am I going to talk about? And I got into the, the Bible and I got into Ellen White and I found that there was so much information on joy, I sort of felt that I could, just couldn't um, bring it all to you. And so uh, today, um, although I seem to have, to my uh, uh, impression, a lot of material in front of me, it's only a very small portion of what the Bible says about joy. Let's bow our heads once again. Father in heaven, we ask that your angels be with us today, that your spirit will be with us, that the angels of darkness will be sent away and that we might have or develop and find in Jesus uh, a feeling of joy and happiness that will help us in our Christian walk. Uh, amen. Well, maybe one of the first occasions of joy on the earth might have been when Adam and Eve had, Abel, uh, had Cain, their first son. Um, this would have been a great joy to them, I'm sure. She would, they would have seen the animals giving birth to little animals and I'm sure that this was a, a time of great joy for Adam and Eve to have their first son and also their second son. Able because remember, they probably thought that they might have been the saviour of the world to heal the world of the mistakes that they had made. Uh, think of the joy that Noah and his family, after all those weeks cooped up in the ark when they got down and uh, walked on grass again. Even if the ground was muddy still, I'm sure that those eight people would have had great feelings of joy and happiness to uh, be starting life on earth again. I don't know whether Abram had a lot of joy when uh, he was called by God to leave his home, but I rather feel that Abraham might have had a lot of times of joy in his life. Think of the, real, of, of the joy he must have had when his arm was stopped with the knife and he looked back and saw that ram in the thicket. Can you imagine the joy that must have been in his heart to th then uh, to be sure that the Lord was leading him and being with him? <clears throat> Jacob also, I feel, had great joy. I, I think he must have been joyful and happy when he met his brother Esau. And it went so well because he was expecting other things. And then <clears throat> the, uh, the children of Israel, of course, think of the joy they had when they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. Uh, think of the joy they must have had the next day, as the Bible said, they saw the bodies of the Egyptians all destroyed. The joy that had, and, and they sang, they sang the song, of Moses <clears throat> and the Lamb. And uh, this is when his sister Miriam um, probably um, became the singer of Israel. And there were the times through the, uh, the 40 years of uh, wandering through the wilderness. There were hard times, but there were times of joy as well. And then we come a little bit later in history and we look at the life of Esther. Um, Esther, as you know, became the queen of the country 
and uh, as she was uncertain of her future because she was doing something dangerous, she was imposing on the king. I'm sure she felt a great sense of joy when he held out his scepter to her. I think that she might have had her heart full of joy too when her uncle Mordecai um, uh, was cleared of, of doing wrong, uh, accused by Haman. I don't know whether it would have been joy to see Haman hanged on the cross that he'd built for Mordecai, but it was certainly a great deal of joy. In fact, the Lord told the children of Israel to be joyful when it happened uh, that they were able to negate the law that Haman had pronounced, that the king had pronounced because of Haman's work. Um, those people, the children of Israel, were to be destroyed on this particular day, but um, the law was not um, removed. That couldn't be done, but it, there was a countermand there that the Jews could um, protect themselves. And so they did. And there were over 500 people slaughtered in the very palace of the king. And that um, <clears throat> was a great uh, a period of, of great joy to those people at that time. And there was established then a, a, um, a period of remembrance and worship and joyfulness which was to carry on uh, for uh, uh, as long as the Jewish people carried on. And then there's the stories of David, but also the stories of the kings. And um, here I get a little bit muddled up with my chronologies, but don't, don't worry if I do. There was Isaiah. And Isaiah... Um, he talked about everlasting joy. And if you like to turn in your books, in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. We'll just have a look what the Bible says about this. Chapter 35, verse 10. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy, gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. What a promise that the children of Israel were given at that time. Let's turn over to chapter 51 and have a look at verse 11. 51 and verse 11. Therefore... The redeemed of the Lord shall return. I think has, this has something to do with the Israelites returning back to Palestine. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing into Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. What a, a blessing that was to the children of Israel. <clears throat> we can go into the Psalms and find uh, any amount of references to joy. Let's just have a look at one or two of them. Psalms 27. First of all, Psalms 27. And verse, verse 6. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. This is David, David's psalm. Um, Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Um, David, I think, learned to play the harp when he was looking after his father's sheep. Um, David learned more about music, singing and playing his harp when he did it in front of, of, uh, of Saul to send uh, uh, the depression away from him. And it helped Saul so much there. <clears throat> Psalms 
Let's have a look at that one. There were a lot of times in, J in uh, David's life, of course, that uh, he had no joy. In fact, he had sadness. 27, what am I? 51 verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. This is David again praying for the remission of his sins. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me. Uh, with thy free spirit. David was asking for more joy. <clears throat> Sorry, I've lost myself here. I thought this would happen, but never mind. We'll get there. When the children of Israel left Babylon and came back to um, Mount Zion, as they called it, to Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple, temple, there was great joy in what they did there. And uh, the story is somewhere in Ezra. If you look at Ezra chapter 3, Ezra chapter 3, Ezra's right back there in the Old Testament around... Job and Nehemiah and those ones. Should have it all written out, shouldn't I? Ezra, chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. <clears throat> Be it known unto the king, hold on, that's not it, 3... 12 and 13. But many of the priests and the Levites and the chiefs of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the house, the first house, when the foundations of the house was laid. This was the temple, the first temple built. They wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud with joy. So the old people had sadness because they'd seen the first temple and how beautiful it was. And yet there was joy because it was all being rebuilt. Verse 13, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. What a situation. Half, half the people crying for joy or sadness and the other half crying for joy. Weeping of the people for the people shouted with a loud shout and the noise was heard afar off. They were so happy to be back in Jerusalem and building the, the temple. Let's go to chapter 8 in Ezra. That was when they built the foundations of the temple. And when it came to building more of the temple, uh, chapter 8, verse 16. Then sent I for Eliezer, for Ariel, for... And the, no, I've got the wrong verse there. No, no matter. What, what happened was there was just a big rejoicing when they'd built the temple as when uh, the, they had finished the, uh, the foundations. Nehemiah uh, was one of the leaders those times. Um, Nehemiah, I think, was the one who was the butler to the king in Babylon and he was sent out to supervise and... Um, he talked about the joy of the Lord, the strength of the people. Um, and they rejoiced in great joy. Um, the joy of the Jerusalem was even, even afar off. We read that. People around about um, didn't want the temple to be rebuilt. And uh, they were a little bit put out by the, the, the celebrations of joy and happiness that the builders of the temple were making. However, the work was done. And if you looked into the life of David further, you would see some remarkable times of joy for him. Um, <clears throat> if we turn to 1 Samuel chapter 18. Um, 
David had a lot of sadness in his life, but he had a lot of joy too. And if we look at verse 6. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines. You remember that <clears throat> David was taken into the, um, into the uh, palace to help keep Saul's mood good because the, the devil used to make him very depressed and he would get very angry. And they'd asked David to come in and uh, play the harp and sing to him. And when that happened, the evil spirits would leave him. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, Philist um, David became a soldier and uh, Saul put him in charge of the army, that the women came out of the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with, with joy and with the instruments of music. Well, that was all right. That was a thing of joy. They just won a big battle. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Well, this wasn't really joy for David, was it? But as um, time went on, um, verse 7, was it? Yes. <clears throat> and this time of um, joy of winning the battle um, was coloured uh, uh, by uh, the um, jealousy that Saul had for David's uh, success. The next time I want to look at David's life was when he was at Ziklag. I spoke about this quite a few years ago, but you remember Ziklag, Ziklag, Ziklag was the little town that was given David to live in in the Philistines' camp. And I want to stop there now, and I think we'll have a song. We'll have a song to uh, get our joy going. Singers, can we come? We're going to sing Joy to the World. Have we got the, the words there? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. And uh, let us sing uh, with the idea of singing for heaven and nature. So we left David in Ziklag and the time came when the Philistines, who were his hosts and allowed him to live in their land, were going to fight 
uh, to war against Saul. And so David thought, because I'm getting protection from the Philistines, I should offer my service to fight uh, with them. And so he um, offered to go to war against his own people and against his own king. Uh, because he thought it was the right thing to do. They would have nothing to do with that because they thought, right, um, he can't be trusted and, and he'll start fighting us as the war goes on. And so uh, David wasn't very happy uh, about being rejected in that fashion. And so he decided the best thing he could go was go back to Ziklag and be with his 300 worthy men and their families. But before they got back to Ziklag, they saw clouds, they saw clouds of smoke in the distance. And when they got there, they found that the houses had been burned down. All the animals had been taken away. Their families were not there. Their wives were not there. The children were not there. And they had been raided by the Edomites of the south. Now, this was a payback because David had raided the towns of the south uh, some time prior to this. They knew he was up there talking with the Philistines and so they came in when David was busy talking to the Philistines and they ransacked the town, they destroyed the town and stole all their possessions. This was a period of great sadness. In fact, the Bible says they cried until they couldn't cry anymore. But then they, uh, they came across this young man who had been one of the raiders. And he told them where the people were, who were the raiders, what they had done. And as a result of knowing that, David was able to go down to beat them and get everything back. Now, it was unusual they got everything back because whenever uh, they raided towns like this, it was a custom to kill the children, uh, some of them, and to kill some of the wives or, and um, uh, uh, kill all the animals for food and so on and distribute around. And, and that didn't happen in this case. The Lord protected David's wives and his family and those of the, um, the men that were with him. And this caused great joy for David, of course, and his army of 300 worthies. <clears throat> and so this was a time of great joy for David. And then after this, of course, this was the battle that uh, Saul was killed in. And so after this, um, David, of course, uh, was, it was known that David was going to be the next king. And so they came and they began to uh, anoint him as the new king and crown him um, partially and then later on, some time later, with all of, all of the, um, the people there. Um, let's look at... Um, where am I? First Chronicles chapter 15. First Chronicles chapter 15. There are a few verses here that might just help us. Verse 15. Uh, verse, verse 16. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to the singers with instruments and music, psaltery and harps and cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice of joy. joy. Um, David decided that he would take the ark, which had been stolen by the Philistines, back into um, Palestine. And he uh, appointed the Levites to, to do this. And um, it was successful. This was a celebration of joy because they were returning to Jerusalem uh, with um, the, the Ark of God. At this particular time, they didn't get to Jerusalem. But in verse 25, So David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy. Obed-Edom was where the ark had rested for some three months and it had brought joy and happiness to Obed-Edom. And verse 29, and it came to pass, now we don't want to read that because that's, that's not joy. And so uh, David himself had a lot of times of joy and a lot of his joy and happiness came out in his songs and in his psalms that he had written so many of. <clears throat> now it must be time for us to get into the New Testament. 
And let's talk about Matthew. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13 and see if this strain of joy and happiness was to continue. Matthew, what did I say? 13, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and he buyeth that field. This man <laughs> celebrated with joy the finding of this valuable thing. And it brings to mind the other um, <clears throat> the other story uh, from the New Testament about the talents. You remember the ten person who got the ten talents? Uh, he was given ten talents more when his master returned and his master said, enter thou into what? The joy of your Lord. A and this also happened to the man who got five talents. He earned another five talents. He was also um, asked and uh, uh, to enjoy the, the joy of his Lord. But the person who had the one talents, of course, we won't go any further there. Success in working for God brings you joy. And he will give you ultimate joy when he gets you to heaven. There was great joy when Mary came to Elizabeth. You remember Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist um, Mary was pregnant with Christ and when Mary came into the, uh, the presence of Elizabeth, what happened? Elizabeth said the babe leapt for joy. How did she know it was for joy? It must have been a wonderful experience for those two ladies at that time to have that joy. I think it's time to sing again about joy. Thank you, sinners, will, uh, singers. Uh, <laughs> well, we're all forgiven sinners, but that's good. Come forward and, and we'll sing um, in the garden. See, joy and happiness, you see. Laughing is, 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 is what it is. I come to the garden alone. Thanks, Mike. to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear calling on my ear the Son of God is closest and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'm looking forward to the, to, to the joy that I'm going to feel when I see Jesus face to face. And I'm going to feel joy because I will know that he will have joy in his heart because I'm there. Um, <clears throat> we're told that when one sinner repents, 
all of heaven rejoices. I would love to hear the singing that that joy and rejoicing would, would bring about. This is something that we, something tremendous uh, that we have to look forward to. Now, where were we up to here? What was I talking about? Can anyone remember? <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> so much of it. Matthew 13, was it? 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, hidden in the field. Yes, we read that one. And it was like uh, uh, about the man who, who lost a sheep, left 99, went out to look, and there was rejoicing. The lady who lost a coin, cleaned her house out, uh, eventually found it, bring her friends in, and there was rejoicing. Think of the rejoicing that was in the house of the, uh, um, the lame man uh, that was let down through the roof. And if I can find the reference uh, here, we'll talk about it. From the Ministry of Healing. <clears throat> In the home of the paralytic, there was great rejoicing when he returned to his family. You remember Jesus, first of all, had forgiven this man to be sent, son, son, thy sins are forgiven thee. And that got all the, 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 the big rabbis and whatnot up no good. And eventually he, he healed him. He told him to lift up his bed and go home. And so he did. He returned to his family, carrying with ease the couch on which he had been slowly born from their presence, but a short time before. They gathered around with tears of joy. You see, joy can often bring tears. There are tears of joy, hardly daring to believe their eyes. He stood before them in the full vigour of manhood. These, those arms that had been shrunken and leaden-hued was now fresh and ruddy. He would, with a firm step, a firm, he walked with a firm, free step, Joy and hope were written in every lineament of his countenance and an expression of purity and peace had taken the place of the marks of sin that he presented before and suffering. Glad thanksgivings went up from that home and God was glorified through this miracle that Jesus performed. And there was great joy in the house of the paralytic that night. Sorry, I told you I was a bit disorganised. I've got so many pieces of paper and I've got so much that I have to leave out. <clears throat> John 16 verse 20. Let's have a look at that. Did we look at that before? John 16, verse 20. Oh, dear. John chapter 16, verse 20. We'll get there. Verily, verily, <coughs> Jesus talking here, I think. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned to joy. Jesus had just told his disciples that he was going to go away from them for a while. And they wouldn't understand where he's gone and then when he was going to come back. Um, <clears throat> because he was going to go to his father, they will have great sorrow and th then that will turn to joy. And then um, let's go to verse 22.
and ye now therefore have sorrow, and ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. He was telling them that the disciples were going to have joy at the return uh, of Jesus from heaven after he'd gone to see his father. Verse 24. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Something was going to change here. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. And at this particular time, he he told them that they were to... um, ask in his name he hadn't told them to pray in his name before but that was where uh, that was started Romans 5.11 let's turn to Romans 5.11 and not only so but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. A joy in receiving the atonement uh, from God. Verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Paul was talking here to the Romans, telling him them that they would receive great joy when um, they realised that their atonement was right and that they understood all about it. Um, the, the disciples at this particular time didn't understand what all these things meant. They'd been listening to Christ for three and a half years and a lot of the things that he said seemed a bit mumbo-jumbo to them. But he had, he had assured them that in time they would understand and that the comforter would come and the comforter would bring to mind the things that they could not, could not understand. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Not only atonement from God, but salvation from God. Paul himself he talked about the faithfulness of salvation he talked about their repentance um, faithfulness to the Thessalonians he talked about repentance to the Corinthians he talked about the steadfastness of the Colossians Habakkuk talked about a joy in the God of their salvation. Now, you and I have the privilege of enjoying atonement, salvation, faithfulness, repentance, and steadfastness. And what are these? These are gifts of the Spirit, aren't they? We can be joyful in knowing that the Lord will give us the gifts of the Spirit. <clears throat> Let's uh, sing uh, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. M- maybe we will cut that one and we'll sing our last hymn, There's Sunshine in My Soul Today. Is there any sunshine outside? Not too much. But even when it is dark outside, we can have joy. Let's rejoice this morning as we sing about the sunshine in our heart. And we'll stand for this. There's sunshine in my soul today. joy in Christ. We can have joy in Christ because of his atonement, uh, his faithfulness, repentance, his steadfastness and his salvation. We can have happiness here 
But that's not all. For joy is laid up above. While we're li living our joyful life down here, we can be happy to think that we're going to live in joy when we get to the, get to the heavenly courts. And isn't that a wonderful thought? And I would want each one of us today to make sure that we have this joy in our hearts. We have to be joyful Christians. We have to smile. We have to rejoice. We have to show others that Christianity is good. It's joyful. It's happiness. And I want to say again, and I'll clear my voice before. I not only want you to be my neighbours in heaven, but I want you to be members of my joy club. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so glad that joy can be such a part of Christian life. And as we go into the next week of life, we just pray, Lord, that you will give us the joy that will be permanent to us. Give us happiness. Help us to show others that Christianity is joyful. It's happiness. It's goodness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.